Hello, and welcome to Connect DC's Lamas Ritual. I'm Angela Raincatcher, the convener for Connect DC, a Wiccan-based public ritual group that seeks to heal and transform the city of Washington, D.C. through magic, mystery, and celebration. Connect DC seeks to build relationships within our community and with the earth itself in order to further our right relationship with the land and the people who have tended and held it sacred from time immemorial. We acknowledge that we normally hold our rituals on the ancestral lands of the Nakachunk, the Pamunkey, the Piscataway, Potawan, Saponi, Seneca, Tutelo, and other people whose names we do not know yet, but are committed to learning. We pay respect to their elders, past and present, and we honor their truths. I encourage you to fully participate in this ritual by holding the words in your heart and following the actions described either physically or in your mind's eye. For the working today, you will want something edible that represents the harvest to you. It could be a bowl of any grain, a piece of bread or a baked good, a fruit or a vegetable, maybe something even from your garden. Something that you can easily hold in your hands and have at the ready. If you are new to ritual, don't worry. We will describe everything that we are doing. And now we'll move into a practice to purify and prepare ourselves for ritual. If it is your practice or if you would like to, you can use incense or a small bowl of salt water. I am going to intone the syllable OM three times. Uh, and when you hear the sound, I want you to really feel the vibration ring through your energetic bodies, shaking loose any stagnancy or ick or stress. Whoa. Now take a deep breath in and release it, feeling clean and refreshed. And now without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Aurelia for the history of Connect DC. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Aurelia. The roots of Connect DC go back to 1998 when our founder, Katrina Messenger, was looking for ways to meld her Wiccan spiritual practice with her long-term political activism. That spring, she attended the public spring equinox ritual put on by the ritual planning cell of the Reclaiming Collective in San Francisco. She returned home with the idea of starting a public ritual group in her hometown of DC. 
The first ritual was held for summer solstice 1998 on the roof of the now closed Lamas Women's Bookstore. After discussing her idea for the original working with numerous friends and colleagues, Katrina launched Connect DC in the spring of 1999. The original working of Connect DC was to ritually reconnect the boundary stones that had been placed around the city in the 1790s to give the city some good magical boundaries. The original working began at Spring Equinox 1999 and concluded a year later at Spring Equinox 2000. After that, Connect DC celebrated the solstices and equinox around the city in a stop, drop, and do ritual manner for several years before adding Samhain and then the other cross-quarter rituals. In 2013, we began holding our rituals at Two Rivers Sanctuary. And in 2017, we added full moons to the mix. In 2019, to celebrate and honor the 20th anniversary of Katrina's vision and the original working, Connect DC revisited the boundary stones with the intent to reinvigorate the city's magical boundaries and create a strong container for our community. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Vanessa to read our ritual intention for this year and for this Lamas ritual and to lead us in grounding. Hi, my name is Vanessa and it's great to be here with everyone. Each year, the Connect DC Ritual Circle crafts an intention to guide our work. This year, our annual intention is, our community is a vibrant container of healing, hope, transformation, and joy. Connect DC provides sacred space where we can connect with our deepest selves and each other. By celebrating the cycles of nature, we fill ourselves with love and pour that love into the world. This Lamas, uh, our intention is, we see the beginnings of justice manifesting. Let us rejoice in this first harvest and tend to the change that is growing in the fertile ground of our hearts and our communities. To further prepare ourselves, let us ground and center into this moment here and now. Take a deep breath in. Pull all of the parts of yourself, all of the worries or anxieties or the little nuisance voices that say, oh, do this, do this, do this. And pull it all in to this moment here and now. Look around you and really notice what you see. What is the quality of the light right now where you are? Notice what you hear. Notice what you smell. Notice what you taste, maybe the remnants of your morning coffee. Feel the sensation of your skin. Feel your clothes, the surface you're sitting on, the air around you, your feet firmly on the ground. And just really sink into this moment, here and now. And welcome to our ritual. And now, Aurelia, will lead us in casting the circle. Thank you, Vanessa. So now we will create a container for the work that we'll do together by casting a circle 
which will bring us together on the astral. And I need everyone's help to cast a circle. To create a circle on the astral, we want to envision it encircling every person who watches this. So everyone can do this, no matter your level of experience. And I want you to begin by imagining the energy of the world around you being gathered up into the palm of your dominant hand. Gather all that energy tingling and swirling around you. And when it gets warm and tingly, almost electric in your hand, you're going to cast it in front of you to the farthest point you can see. Imagine a line of bright blue energy going out from your hand like a fishing line. Pull that line in an arc towards the right and over your right shoulder. Keep breathing and keep the line of energy as you draw a circle further around directly behind you as far as you can imagine. Again, draw it beyond and over your left shoulder and pull it around to connect it to the line that you started directly in front of you. And now pull that connected line up above you, far into the heavens, and then bring the energy down and under the ground below you, deep into the earth, and then bring the energy back up to meet the point in front of you where you started. And now hold the image of the bright blue circle that you have surrounded yourself with. Take a breath in, and on your exhale, imagine the energy bursting to fill up that circle like a balloon. The circle is cast and we are between the worlds. What happens between the worlds affects all the worlds. So mote it be. And now Harper will call in the elements and the ancestors. Thank you, Aurelia. And Harper. Let us now call in the elements to aid in our work. If you know where the cardinal directions are in your space, you may choose to face them if you wish, as I call the elements in each direction. I call to the air in the east. I call to the wind that carries the soothing breeze, the sounds of joy and rage, and the cleansing summer rain. I call to the winds that carry news of what is coming into being and what yet lies beyond. I call to the voice within each of us that calls out to one another and speaks truth. Hail and welcome, air. I call to the fire in the south. I call to the life-giving sun that ripens the earth and brings the first harvest. I call to long hours of light that let us see clearly where we are and what lies before us. I call to the forge that shapes and strengthens. I call to the fire that sustains us deep in our hearts that calls us to each other and to a better world. Hail and welcome, fire. I call to the earth and the west. I call to the earth that always, always holds and supports us. I call to the earth that measures time in eons and contains all that is conceived, growing, blooming, living. I call to the earth that can hold our pain 
that is always, always working to heal itself and us, its children. I call to our bones that carry the sorrows and the wisdom of our ancestors that hold us up in our work and to the soil that brings forth riches. Hail and welcome, Earth. I call to the water in the north. I call to the branches, streams, and rivers that feed into our mother ocean. I call to the oceans of tears we cry in our rage and grief. The sweat of our work, our daily efforts. To our blood, the pulse of life that connects us to all water and all life to the tide that shifts and turns with time. I call to the capacity within each of us to open our hearts that we may freely receive and give in the unending flow of love. Hail and welcome, water. And now, I call the ancestors, invite them into our circle. I call to the ancestors of spirit, ancestors of blood, ancestors of soul, the mighty dead and the beloved, the honored and the forgotten. I call to you, venerated ones who envisioned a better world and turned again and again to the work of building it. To you who organized, sat in, acted up, to the Wobblies, Freedom Riders, Panthers, Strikers, Boycotters, Student Occupiers, Visionary Poets, and Path-Breaking Transcestors. We call to all those who knew and who showed us that the healing and transformation of our communities are not the work of one day or one season or one year, but of generations. Whose labors and love nourished us and made paths for us, even if we did not or do not know their names. Without your vision and your striving, we would not be who we are or where we are. We are grateful. We know you see as we do that your work, our work has brought good harvests, but is far from over. Like you, we are dreaming a better world into existence. Comfort us when we're weary, help us turn to the work again. Hold our vision with strength and gentleness. Hail and welcome, ancestors. Hail. And now, Lizette will begin to call the gods into our circle. Hi, I am Lizette. I will be invoking Demeter, Greek goddess of agriculture. We are living in a time where words are no longer enough. We understand that the needs of life, of survival, of health and vitality rest not just on the hopes and dreams and shouts and cheers of those who fight for justice. We must also remember that dreams, all dreams, all hopes must be brought down into this world, the manifest world. Demeter knows very well how hollow words can be when not tied to action. When she lost her daughter to the underworld, her grief was so great that the fields of the world shriveled and died. No words of her fellow gods could alleviate her grief and her rage. It was only action 
only when justice was found and her daughter could come into her own power did Demeter allow the earth to grow fertile once more. We honor Demeter when we work to manifest our dreams, when we find new ways of living and nurturing each other, and when we care for our bodies and our minds. Because this body and this world is the only one we have. I call to Demeter, goddess of agriculture and the harvest. I ask you for your wisdom and the will to bring justice into this world and to rejoice with us as we gather this first harvest. Demeter, goddess, hail and welcome. And now I'm going to pass this off to Marnie to invoke Luke. Hi, I'm Marnie, and I will be calling Lou. Lou, champion of the people, we call to you, and we ask that you join us in this ritual for highest good. Lou, spear of sovereignty, we ask that you aid the children of your heart and blood, warriors, healers, magicians, creators, the hearth keepers, the poets and scholars, the heralds and bards, those who have survived and worked and sown for generations. Help us to harvest the bounty of justice long growing. Help us to share the plenty of the lands, of the body and of the soul. Help us remember with every day, with every moment, with every breath, we are enough. Lou, father of heroes, be with us now. And I will now turn things over to Angela to tell the story of Lamas. Hello again. The holiday that we celebrate today is known both as Lamas, which is <clears throat> a shortened form of loaf mass, to mark the annual wheat harvest. It is also known as Lunasa, which is the assembly of Lu, also a harvest ritual. Today I'm going to tell you a story about Lu, an Irish god of skill, right leadership, and champion of the people. And while I tell this story, I invite you to hold in your hands something from your harvest, a cup of rice, oats, grits, some bread, muffin, piece of fruit, veggie, anything edible that represents a good harvest to you. And to tell this story right, whenever I say the name Lou, I need you to all cheer or to say, Hail Lou. And whenever I say the names Bress or Balor, I need you all to boo and hiss and say, Down with Bress or Down with Balor. And I know you'll feel a little silly doing it, but just stay with me. It makes the story a little more engaging. So let me take a deep breath. Once upon a time, 
Far in the distance past, shrouded by mist, the Tuatha de Dana fought a great war against the Fomorians. For you see, Nuada, the king of the Tuatha de Dana, had lost his hand in battle with another rival peoples, and by tradition was deemed unfit to rule. So a young man by the name of Bress was selected to be king. Now Bress was of mixed blood. One parent was Tuatha and the other one Fomorian. And although he was declared the king of the Tuatha, Bress's allegiance was still with the Fomorians. So when the Fomorians decided that the Tuatha should pay them tribute, Bress agreed. And when the Fomorians decided that Tuatha should labor for the Fomorians without pay, food, or rest, Bress agreed. And this went on for many years until one day a poet arrived at Bress's court and was treated not with the hospitality and generosity expected of a king, but with a dark and dirty room in which to sleep and with dry, unappetizing food and no drink. The next morning, when this poet went out to the courtyard and enchanted a satire against Bress, exposing his behavior publicly and cursing him with boils, Bress ran back to the Fomorians, complaining of his fate because he was now covered with boils and deemed unfit to rule. He warned the Fomorians that the Tuatha de Danann may not be paying tribute any longer. Now, Nuada, in the meantime, his hand had been fixed through magical means. And so he was again proclaimed king. And the Tuatha de Danann decided to go to war against the Fomorians to reclaim their freedom and their dignity. And as they were strategizing and preparing for war, another young man of mixed Fomorian and Tuatha blood arrived at the king's gate and requested entrance. Now again, according to tradition, one was not allowed into the king's company without having some skill or talent that would benefit the community. And the Tuatha had been there before with Bress. So the gatekeeper asked the young man, whose name was Lou, what his skill was. And for each skill that Lou gave, the gatekeeper said, yeah, yeah, we got one of those. So um, thank you, but mm, no thank you, bye. And this went on for quite a time because Lou was a very skilled young man. And finally, Lou said, hmm, but do you have anyone with all of these skills? Well, no, said the gatekeeper. Let me go talk to the king. And Nuada, the king of the Tuatha de Danann, said, let this young man come in and be tested. And if he has spoken true, let him lead us in our struggle against the dastardly Fomorians. And so Lou was tested and he succeeded all challenges put to him. And he was proclaimed the general for the fight. Now the night before the next battle, Lou, and his comrades were sitting around the fire and they were stoically preparing for the battle the next day. No one wanted to mention that the fight 
against the Fomorians the last time hadn't gone so well. Nor that they were all poorer and weaker because of the years under the yoke of brass. So it was a pretty grim company. And Lou knew that he needed to lift their spirits. And so he began asking each one how they would help in the next day's fight. So he turned to the smith and asked him, what power do you wield in the struggle? Well, that's easy, said the smith. The swords and spears that I create are strong and they aim true. Good, good. And then Lou turned to the healer and he asked, what power do you, master healer, bring tomorrow? Well, that's easy, said the healer. Whenever anyone is struck down, unless their head is clean lopped off, I bring them back to life to continue to fight the next day. All right, all right, that's a good one, that's a good one. And then Lou turned to the warrior. Well, what about you? Well, that's easy, said the warrior. My courage to stand against the enemy is never shaken. That's good, we need that, said Lou. And then he turned to the magic magician. Well, what do you bring to the struggle? Well, that's easy. My enchantments still the will of the enemy and they cower in fear against our might. All right, that's, that's pretty good. And then Lou turned to the poet. And you, master poet, what skill do you bring? What, what power do you bring to the struggle? Well, that's, that's easy said the poet. My words and song embolden and bolster the spirit of our people. Tonight, tomorrow, and into eternity. All right. Lou was pretty impressed. And as Lou turned to each person around the fire, they were able to see how they contributed to the struggle and how their contribution was vital to success. The next day, the morning of the battle, the sh sun shone bright and early. The forces of the Fomorians lined up against those of the Tuatha de Danann. Lou stood at the front lines to lead and encourage his people to fight for their sovereignty. Among the Fomorians came their king, Balor. Balor of the deadly eye. He was a terror to behold with only one massive eye that was so huge it needed four men to lift the lid, to lift up the lid so that they could see. And he only had one massive leg that shook the ground with each step. And a terror rose up against uh, among the Tuatha because they knew that whoever fell under the gaze of Balor's eye was struck dead immediately. But still, they stood fast. When Lou saw Balor had reached the front lines, he began taunting him with impertinent questions, silly jokes, and an outrageous French accent. Fowler grimaced and furrowed his brow because he was not used to people speaking to him this way. He asked, who is this inconsequential nobody who dares to ridicule me? And Lou shouted, excuse me, I need to take a drink. That's not what Lou shouted. And Lou shouted, It is your grandson, Lou, still with his outrageous French accent, who fucks in your general direction and will defeat you. Now go away, or I shall taunt you a second time. Fowler laughed out loud and ordered his men to lift up his eyelids so that he might see his grandson better and strike him dead. 
But just as the lid was lifted, Lou took his sling and shot out Balor's eye right out of the back of his head. The eye landed flunk in the middle of Balor's army and many of them were struck dead instantly by its power. The Tuatha Dé Danann cheered Lou's aim. Yeah! And they took advantage of the chaos of the Fomorians. And soon after, the Fomorian army was broken and driven back to the sea. And the Tuatha Dé Danann reclaimed their sovereignty and all the people of the land were able to labor for themselves and had plenty to eat and drink with the harvest. And all was well for many years after. For you see, in these dark and troubled times, it takes all of us and our unique talents to resist the forces of injustice. It takes all of us bringing our full selves to the struggle for freedom. When we work to bring in the harvest, that harvest is for everyone. You, me, our neighbors, the most vulnerable among us. That harvest is to feed the people, not just the rich and the mighty. We don't work for them. We work for us, for all of us. Together, we will succeed by following Lou's example through this story. We can be generous. We can rise to the challenges before us. We can speak truth to power. We can laugh in the face of fear. We can build each other up. Together, we fight for peace and justice. Together, we will heal the land. Together, we will bring in the harvest for all. Together, we will bless the land. And now I'm gonna, we're gonna play a song. And as you listen to this song, take in the story of Lou and ask yourself what Lou asked his com comrades the night before the battle. What power or talent do you wield in the struggle? And as you hold your harvest offering in your hands, speak the answers that come to you into that offering. Our hands will work for peace and justice. Our hands will work to heal the land. Gather round the harvest table. Let us feast and bless the land. Our hands will work for peace and justice. Our hands will work to heal the land. Gather round the harvest table. Let us be stand, bless the land. Our hands will work for peace and justice. Our hands will work to heal the land. Gather round the harvest table. Let us be stand, bless the land. Our hands will work for peace and justice. Our hands will work to heal the land. Gather round the harvest table. Let us be stand, bless the land. Our hands will work for peace and justice. Our hands will work to heal the land. Gather round the harvest table. Let us be stand, bless the land. Our hands will work for peace and justice. Our hands will work to heal the land. Gather round the harvest table. Let us be stand, bless the land. Our hands will work for peace and justice. Our hands will work to heal the land. Gather round the harvest table. Let us be stand, bless the land. Our hands will work for peace and justice. Our hands will work to heal the land. Gather round the harvest table. Let us be stand, bless the land. Thank you. 
And now we're going to gather our strengths, our resources, our harvest, and we're going to send our intentions out into the energy of the wider world. And if you want to include your power or your, your talent into the broader working, I invite you to share those talents in the comments. We're just giving some time for people to do that. Esther, thank you, your music and your compassion. We, we always appreciate those. Mm, Tony, your knowledge and persistence. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, mothering, compassion. Thank you, Penny. Yes. Melissa, poet, organizer. Yes. Thank you. Ah, the Accorda, your ability to gain, organize, and share knowledge. Thank you, your inspiration and composing music. Thank you, thank you. Mm, channeling and mediumship abilities. Thank you, Angela. Adam's compassion and healing. Thank you, thank you. And I know there are many more out there, but let us, Harper, writing and, and analyzing, phone banking, thank you. Aha, G can carry groceries, thank you. We need all of that help. Aurelia, holding hearts and visions to navigate through difficult times, yes, yes, thank you. I know Maury will come in because there's a time lag as I do this, but together let us take, we're going to take four deep breaths. And with each breath, I want you to inhale and hold on to as much life force energy as you can in your body. You see, with each breath, you are building a cone of power within yourself. Uh, this is something when we're live and together, we do by singing and dancing together and building energy together. But because we're here in this type of venue, we're going to do it through the Ha prayer. And that's building that energy within yourself until we release it at the end of the fourth breath. We breathe all that energy. You're going to breathe it either into your harvest offering or up to your God self to send our prayers up and out into the world. And so let us take our first breath and breathe in life force. And hold it into your body. Hold that life force energy into your body as you breathe out. Just hold it, hold it. And then a second time, you're going to breathe in life force. And as you breathe out, just hold on to that life force energy. Feel it building and holding, building as you breathe out. And then your third time, you're going to breathe in life force energy. And then as you breathe out, just hold it. Hold that life force energy in you as you breathe out the air. And then the last time, you're going to breathe in that life force energy. And now tip your head back or point it to your offering and blow it out. <sighs> C 
sending your intention, your talents up and out to your God self, to the gods, to the wider world. And take a moment to let it be received. You may feel some of that energy fall back and bless you in response. And if you energize your harvest offering, you can eat half of that to integrate your prayer into your body, to fully embody it in the physical. And then you can share the other half with the gods, the land spirits, the ancestors, whoever you work with. Let this magic energize your work, inspire you to action, and to transform the world. So mote it be. And now I turn this over to Marnie to give thanks to Lou. Mighty and beloved Lou, champion of the people. Thank you for joining us in this working. Go if you must, stay if you will. Hail and farewell, Lou. And Lizette will now lead us in thanking Demeter. Demeter, goddess of agriculture. Demeter, we taste your harvest every day. And the food that we eat and the people that love and support and surround us in the pieces of nature that we interact with around us and within us. Demeter, we thank you for the wisdom of how others, how you, how we can manifest justice and nurturance in this world. Demeter, we thank you. We bid you hail and farewell. I'm now going to pass it off for thanking the ancestors. Thank you, Ms. M. Ancestors of blood, ancestors of spirit, ancestors of soul, we thank you. Thank you for this and every moment you hold space with us, share your wisdom and your strength with, with us, help us to dis the you help us to discover our strengths and our talents to continue your work, our work. Ancestors, we thank you and we bid you hail and farewell. And now I will lead us in thanking the elements. We give thanks to the water, your flow of endless love, your cleansing rains, for bearing our grief, quenching our souls and returning us to life. May we continue to receive and give all that we need. And with this prayer in our hearts, we give you thanks, water, and we bid you hail and farewell. We give thanks to the earth that holds us all, shows us the path of growth and evolution and provides all that sustains us on our journeys. We give thanks to the bones that hold us up and carry our ancestors' wisdom. May we carry their strength and heed their lessons. And with this prayer in our hearts, we give thanks to the source and the source and, and su of all sustenance and life. We give thanks to earth 
and we bid you hail and farewell. We give thanks to the fire for teaching us that the flame in our hearts and in the heart of all life sustains us and must always be fed. We give thanks to the sun for the life it gives to the fields and our bodies and our work. We give thanks for the gifts of burning and of renewal, for lighting the path and showing us transformation is possible. May we continue to carry that flame inside us. And with this prayer in our hearts, we give you thanks, fire, and we bid you hail and farewell. <clears throat> we give thanks to the air. air that keeps breath in our bodies and the wind that whispers in our ears to keep going, to cry out, to stand up, to build and make, sing and dance, to continue because the future is there, is coming into being. May we feel the wind at our backs and sail true. And with this prayer in our hearts, we give you thanks, air, and we bid you hail and farewell. And now Aurelia will lead us in opening the circle. Thank you, Harper. I want to draw everyone's focus back to the circle that we cast together. And if you can see the image on the screen, I want you to notice how the circle is unwinding. And now imagine pulling up the energy of the circle into your non-dominant hand, pulling it up into a tight little ball, starting from below you and above you. And now pull that energy in front of you, unwinding towards the left, over your left shoulder, unwinding behind you and gathering the energy as you go into that hand, into your hand, back and over your right shoulder and then gather up that last little bit in front of you. Bring all the energy of the circle that was around us into a tight little ball, tighter and tighter, and then blow it out to disperse it into the universe. The circle is open, but unbroken. May the peace of the goddess go in our hearts, merry meet, Mary part and Mary meet again. And now Angela uh, has some announcements for us. So we have a few upcoming events all of which will be live streamed here on our Facebook page, Connect DC, um, basically until further notice. Tomorrow night at 7.30 is our full moon meditation. Um, and then August the 18th, Tuesday, August the 18th, at 7.30 is our August dark moon message with Katrina Messenger. We will also be uh, celebrating uh, full moon and dark moon uh, in September. Those dates will be announced uh, on our Facebook page uh, and on our meetup uh, page as well. Our Maybon Autumn Equinox ritual will be Sunday, September 20th 
at 12 noon here again on our, our, our Facebook page. Um, I want to thank um, all of the people who uh, participated with us live today, who commented, um, and I want to thank all of those who uh, will be watching this later as well. Uh, I personally want to thank uh, all of our ritualists today. Uh, you guys did a really awesome job. And I want to thank uh, our tech director, uh, Adam. Uh, this was his first time uh, doing tech for us, and I think he did a marvelous job. Um, thank every I want to thank everybody for upholding the magic. And we hope you had a good experience. Um, we invite you to leave a comment and to let us know about your experience and how we can improve uh, for future online offerings. So good afternoon. May the gods be with you. And blessed be. Until next time. Peace.